and welcome to our second concert in the Barn Presents series. In this episode, we will be celebrating the work of UK composer and singer-songwriter Finn Anderson. This whole concert series is um, to support the Barn Theatre and the Save Our Barn campaign. You can donate at www.barntheatre.org.uk forward slash SOB or you can donate on the number below. The Barn Theatre has been running since early 2018 and has produced many a show since that time. Since the lockdown, since this climate has come into place, it is estimated just over a quarter of a million pounds of uh, loss that we have uh, suffered during this. So to keep our doors open, to keep our lights on, we have had tremendous support across the industry and uh, across the country um, from, from our followers and fans and from uh, new audience members. So without further ado, I would like to welcome uh, our special guests for the evening, and it's uh, Finn Anderson. Welcome. Hey, Jamie. Great to be here. I'm not shy of saying it. I am a super fan of your work. And uh, it's, as I said, I came across your work a, a while ago now in London on your first uh, step into uh, in London with the streets. Yeah, with streets. It was, it was a musical um, yeah, in 2013, um, which was the, the first show that I worked on. I worked on in London. Um, and um, yeah, that was that was a really exciting time. And it's really nice that you've kind of been aware of my work since then. It was that was a great opportunity for me to, to meet a lot of great people. Um, well, thank you, Finn. Let's, uh, I guess, get started and welcome our first guest. So our first guest, um, you may remember as the leading lady from the barn production of Daddy Long Legs. Um, she has been a phenomenal performer throughout the years. And uh, recently she was in uh, Singing in the Rain at the Mill at Sonnen. Uh, it is Rebecca Jane Davis. Hello, Rebecca. Hey, how are you, how are you doing? <laughs> Good, thank <laughs> okay, you. It's nice uh, to see you again. I know, right? It's been a while. I know. It has been a while, actually. I blame you entirely for that. Oh, yeah, it's completely my fault. <laughs> we need to write the one woman show for you. That's what we need to do. Finn, working <laughs> on it. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Rebecca. Nice to meet you too, Finn. I think we met in the wardrobe at one point. Like we met in the wardrobe to people that don't work in theatre sounds like we met in like Narnia or some kind of <laughs> strange. Like, um, I think you're making yourself a tea and I was just about to go on stage and you're like, hi, I'm just doing Christmas. It was very time. likely I was making myself a tea because generally I, I'm doing that many times a day. Um, yeah, me too. Particularly in the middle of a stressful theatre process. Um, <laughs> not that it's, it's great, but. The people won't know that. Uh, it was Daddy Long Legs, and then straight after that, it was Christmas Carol. So there was that slight kind of crossover between performances yeah. and rehearsals. Um, yeah, so I was working, working on stuff backstage and kind of hearing you through the tunnel every day as well. So I know your voice very well. <laughs> uh, oh, well, well, thank you. Thank you for letting me sing one of your songs. It was really fun. Uh, what, is this your first introduction to Finn's music? Or how, have, you, have, you, have you done what the rest of us have done and just uh, kind of stalked all his music? Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I mainly stalked him when uh, Christmas Carol was announced whilst we were at the barn. Um, so, you know, I like to do a little creative and, you know, actor stalk just to see who's coming into the building. And um, I actually came across Islander, which oh. I just thought was like the most beautiful <laughs> music, like ethereal and all the different yeah, melodies and rhythms and harmonies. It was... It was amazing, actually, and I'm 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 really waiting for an album to come out because oh, I can it's only in, it's like, in the works. It's in the works. Is it? Oh yeah. yeah. I can only catch like little clips and glimpses off of you know different websites and and streams. So um, mm. yeah, I thought that was beautiful. So I was actually really excited that you were coming to the barn. And then um, when Jamie approached me about this concert, I was like, yeah, I'll sing one of his songs. Yeah, it's, it's really nice, you know, you get to kind of collaborate. This time has kind of opened up new opportunities for collaboration with people that you might never normally work with and people that, you know, live so far from you and you couldn't normally work with. And so it's cool. It's really nice. Yeah. Finn, what, Finn, why don't you tell us a bit about, obviously, we've got uh, uh, how, how obviously these concerts work is we have uh, a nice chat and then we show two songs. So obviously, first up, we have got Rebecca uh, and then we have also got another song. So Finn, why don't you tell us about these, these songs and kind of the, the process behind these or... Uh, where they're kind of in context where they're from yeah for sure um i'll sort of work backwards so the the song we're going to see after rebecca is is a song called hitchcock which actually is not from a musical it's one of the only songs tonight that's that's not from a musical it's a song that i it's basically just like my first heartbreak song that i ever wrote like my first proper and um, um breakup song 
So Nick is gonna Nick is gonna be singing that. Um, streaming with tears. <laughs> streaming yeah. With tears. Um, and yeah, the song that that Rebecca's gonna sing is um, from a musical, um, a work in progress musical about basically a group of people on an allotment garden in in the UK. Um, who are kind of amateur gardeners and this this very diverse community on an allotment garden um, who end up in a battle with the government and um, because the government the count, local council are trying to build on their allotment site so it's kind of it's it's full of fun you know it's full of vegetable puns it's it's a really <laughs> joyful community musical about a group of amateur gardeners it's so perfectly british yeah. so perfectly yeah, british like. <laughs> I, I ever in any in any kind of any kind of way amazing well it's Quite a catchy song. I'm not gonna lie. After you sent it to me, Jamie, the first time, I was like, I listened to it a couple of times, and then I was just humming it around the house. I'm like, what am I humming? And I was like, it's that song. It's taking on government. And then even Mikey started humming it, and he's like, oh god. Uh -oh. Sorry, Mikey. <laughs> Get him into it. Do a duet. You can't. Nothing to be sorry for. It's such a lovely melody and tune. Like, it's great. Thank you. Well, I guess we uh, we better let everyone have a listen. So. Uh, Rebecca, do you want to do us the honours of uh, introducing yourself and uh, Nicholas's song? It's me with Taking On Government, and then afterwards it will be Nicholas McLean with Hitchcock. Enjoy! I remember I sat on the bed in a villa in Spain Expensive champagne in my glass You held out a ring and you said you would bring the world to me the plans I had made in my mind, they no longer made sense. I stepped over your fence, but the grass, it wasn't as luscious and green as you told me it would be. And the world never came to that girl. She regressed, so impressed with what you'd offered. Well, I'm taking it back. I'm making it mine I've sat at the table I've tasted your wine And it's not as sweet As the grapes on the vine In the place that I'm going I'm cutting the weeds That are holding me down Planting my seeds In more fertile ground With plenty of light And plenty of room For plenty of growing When we challenge the council I thought will they empty our bins will they still let us into the park so afraid I'd embarrass myself so afraid I'd get things wrong now we're taking on government I want to scream want to shout like I'm finally out of the dark I see there's a fighter in me and she's
Cause you burn a hole in my back Through my checkered red lumberjack shirt Through my black t-shirt to my skin I can't help but wish that Hitchcock Would appear and tell us to walk back So we can shoot the scene again But it's in your eyes I see that you are breaking It's in your eyes And it cuts me to the bone If we only could pretend That this was Hollywood And when the tears begin That someone would shout Cut Maybe in the second take We could retrace our steps And make amends Before the camera lens is shut But I have to turn away I have to give it up Cause this is real life This isn't cinema Nobody can twist this plot, not even Hitchcock. This, the hardest year of 21, the hardest thing I've ever done. You leaving through the trees as your leather boots begin to pass along the path between the grass. I wish the frame your inward freeze, but it's with my eyes. I see it in slow motion, it's in my eyes. And it cuts me to the bone If we only could pretend That this was Hollywood And when the credits roll Our tears come to an end All the people watching cry Cause they have witnessed romance die But you and I, we know just pretend but I have to turn away I have to give it up cause this is real life it isn't cinema and nobody can twist this plot not even Hitchcock So that was Rebecca Jane Davis and Nick McLean. And uh, now we welcome our next guest and it's the wonderful Claire Marie Hall. Hey, hey Claire, hey. how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, Great how, to meet how, you. Yeah, and obviously you two have never met before, yeah. I don't think. Lovely to e-meet you. Exactly. I feel like there's so much of that at the moment, this whole e-meet. The amount of people uh, everyone's going to know new because everyone's going to these Zoom chats and these video chats, but they've never met in real life. It's going to be this whole weird dynamic when everyone meets face to face. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. soon when we can all meet like, face to face. Hopefully it won't be too long. I know. <laughs> the issue is we have no idea how yeah. and where and why. and Jane, We don't know at the moment, which is frustrating, especially with the theatre industry. We just don't know when uh, with social distancing, when that's going to start back up. But isn't it amazing that we can still connect in this way, I guess, and, you know, we can still connect and collaborate and, and that's pretty special. No, yeah. exactly that. And so obviously before we kind of start recording, Claire was telling me a little bit about stalking Finn or I, I was stalking <laughs> Finn or somebody was stalking Finn. I, don't, I can't remember who. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to pretend it wasn't me because it, de it definitely was me. But, uh, so Claire, you, you, where, where did you originally hear Finn's work? 
So I watched um, Adam Lenton's Signal concert, like the first online one, uh, which was a few weeks back, I think, when lockdown first happened. Um, yeah. And then I heard Finn sing um, and perform his song. I think the one I'm actually going to be singing later on, um, on there. So I was like, what a coincidence. But yeah, I loved his work and I actually kind of Googled him afterwards. So wow. cool. <laughs> what a weird and wonderful world. Mm. Oh. Yeah, it was that song. It was that song that I sang that you were going to be performing today. So, which is which is a great coincidence. Yay! And um, Finn, why don't you tell us a little bit about that song? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, used to say is from a musical called A Mother's Song. Um, it's a duet between um, kind of two of the main protagonists. They're a female couple, and um, they've just moved into to a new a new apartment um, in New York. And um, this is basically one of the the sort of protagonist of the story, Sarah. Um, is basically going going down this rabbit hole of family research. She's discovered this box um, of stuff um, that's bringing up a whole lot of of unhappy, not necessarily unhappy, but um, unwanted and uncomfortable memories for her. And, and Alex, her partner, um, always sort of the optimist um, and down to earth character, has kind of is coming in and um, has bought a brand new drinks cabinet and is trying to get Sarah out of her head. And so is is pretending to be a bartender and shaking up some drinks for her. <laughs> Amazing. And obviously this is a, a duet. So this is our first duet within the lockdown setting. So how, how have you found that, Claire? Obviously, because <laughs> you can't, as far as I'm aware, when you usually do a duet, it's nice to kind of obviously be in the same room, obviously as a starting point, and actually uh, kind of vibe together to be able to get the same kind of feel and, and blend and emotion. So how's, how's it been not being able to do that? Yeah, it's, it's, a, weird, um, it's a weird thing. It's, it's going to be so difficult because obviously like when you're with someone in a room or, um, you can kind of gauge when they're going to end the notes and you kind of rehearse together and all that sort of stuff but modern technology like obviously sorts that anyway but yeah it's strange mm. singing to nobody singing to a camera is very weird <laughs> yeah of course and even just the energy of the person in the room you know yeah, yeah. there's nothing to bounce on so. yeah exactly you get used to it <laughs> yeah and obviously um i will mention that obviously nikki evans is unfortunately unwell so um uh, she will no longer be singing on, on the track, but uh, we have got the phenomenal Rosalind Ford joining us uh, for it, which is amazing. Uh, Rosalind was in our, two of our productions, actually, uh, Just So and Daddy Long Legs. So uh, it'd be great to kind of hear you both kind of together. Someone who's obviously uh, worked at the barn physically and someone who's actually worked at the barn non-physically because, Claire, you've done Bard from the Barn, haven't you? Yes. Well, we've just filmed it, actually. So it's not, um, not going to get released for a little bit. But yeah, we did it I think, the day before yesterday, which is exciting. Because once again, that's that's not a, that's not a monologue either, is it? That's working with with uh, other people as well. Am I right? Yes, um, I'm working with Alistair, who is just graduated from Mountview, which is where I went, which is great. Amazing. So, for some reason, you 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 keep getting thrown into like duets and working <laughs> with other people. And it, it's you, great. You're gonna, yeah, it's good to collaborate with people. At least, kind of like we can do it this way while we're in this setting. It's nice oh, to no. meet people. Exactly that, and it, like I said, it's, it's, I think I've made more connections and met more people throughout the last two and a half months than I did in the last two and a half years, just because of the amount of Zoom calls, and it's, there's kind of, not that people make excuses to, to, to meet each other, but it's the fact of, that everyone's just like, yeah, let's, everyone feel, it feels like everyone's a lot more accessible now. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's very happy to say, yeah, I'm just, you know, I walk to my bedroom and, you know, just turn the camera and we can have a chat it's, it's quite nice it's not having to travel for an hour and a half or two hours yeah. um, normally yeah. asking someone to meet you in, in their bedroom on a first meeting would be really really inappropriate but <laughs> everyone's doing it yeah oh yeah it's, it's like pretty much standard now isn't it <laughs> um so obviously we've got uh claire and ros singing used to say but we've also got uh christina bianco singing next as well uh, what yeah. you tell us a bit about her song then uh christina like this is so exciting for me because i love christina's work um and we've met a couple of times in passing but but never collaborated um and yeah sophie's apocalypse is a song i wrote quite a few years ago it's, it was from a musical i was developing at the time about about the sort of impending doom of the end of the world um and seven different characters over seven days, the different ways in which they respond to this kind of media media um, hype that the world was going to end on the on the Friday of that week. Um, and so it's, it was it was quite fun, a fun show, which never actually I never en ended up developing beyond a couple of songs. Um, but this song is a character called Sophie, who is very skeptical of the whole um, of all the rumors about about the end of the world and this prediction, um, and is just trying to go about her her daily life. Um, and it un unravels from there, so you'll see. 
So we're getting right. Yeah. I, okay, now I, I speak for myself, but I'm hoping I'm speaking for everyone watching. I think you should develop that musical. It sounds great. That sounds really great. <laughs> and it kind of actually, the song is kind of strangely relevant right now. It feels like it fits, it fits the tone of the moment. So, yeah. Brilliant. Well, let's, uh, let's take a listen. So, um, Claire, do you want to do us the honours of introducing the next two songs? Yeah, sure. So you have Used to Say, which I'm going to be singing with Rosalind Ford next. And then you've got Christina Bianco singing Sophie's Apocalypse. decaf latte please no i'm on a diet thanks sorry could you please be quiet thanks all of this talk of apocalypse is really getting to me it's getting to be quite ridiculous actually quite hysterical all of these people washed away that would be a miracle somehow i doubt the man in the would be quite that generous to me I just want coffee and I'm late I have to begin my day Could you please have this debate Somewhere a little less in my way I have a life And unlike you I plan on living past next week Completely irrational the world's on pause. Look around, it's clear. Catastrophe is nowhere near. But anyway, if it was, if it was, if it was, I'd have a full fat mocha made extra hot 
with extra chocolate and an extra shot. Fill it to the top of your biggest cup, then throw in a muffin just to round it up. And mmm, 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 mm, that tastes so good. Yes, marshmallows and whipped cream, chocolate sprinkles, I am living the dream. If I'm gonna die, I'll have a carrot cake. I'll go to my grave with a stomach ache. And oh, but the world's not ending, not this year. And in a week, we'll still be here. So I'll have a skinny decaf latte and an apple, please. Oh, <laughs> I know, I'm late, I'm sorry. Did you get my notes? No? Okay, no, don't worry. I will email those. Yes, and those too. They're on my to-do. Yes, I'm just arriving as we speak. What are those sandbags for? You can't be serious. Shall we pack our handbags full of tins of beans for this mysterious threat you all fear is on its way here? Am I the only one with brains? I don't watch sci-fi films. I'm not a kid. I don't believe we're heading to fatal Armageddon. But if I did, if I did. First things first, your skills can go. Take your time, so be nice and slow. Just recline in your office chair. Put up your feet, let down your hair. In seven days, your clients won't exist. Unplug that phone. Today, this desk is a work free zone. Let the end of the world begin. Screw the coffee, someone pass the gin. Work is so much better when you're pissed. Let the party start One giant celebration Get ready to depart Complete annihilation Middle finger to the manager Tell that ass what I think of her A kiss for the office clerk Then set a light to this paperwork And all that burning paper the office building up in flames. Be rational. This international disaster is hardly plausible. The idea of falling stars is not impossible, but not as possible as a pay. Rise, don't stare at the office clerk. Get down to this paperwork. Apocalypse is nowhere near. Not next week and not this year. In seven days, you'll still exist. As will this expanding list. So drink your skinny decaf latte and get a grip. <sighs> that was uh, Claire Marie Hall and Ross Ford singing a duet and Christina Bianco. Uh, next up, we have our next guest, which is Emmanuel Kojo. Welcome, Emmanuel. <laughs> Hey, how you doing? Hey. Yeah, good, thank you, man. Thank you for joining us like, on thank such you. a sunny day. I know, it's actually quite nice. It's like, I'm literally, I'm just looking out my bedroom and like from here, if I can turn it around, I've got like Chiswick Housing Gardens literally here. Oh, nice, look at that. Yeah, so it's not, it's not a bad view, but like when I go to the park and it's so busy, I kind of just take myself back home because I'm like, this ain't the life for me. <laughs> so how are you finding the lockdown do you know what it's been it started off hella rough but it's been amazing because I, I think kind of like what this song does it's been a little time for me to just like reflect and like it's been time for me myself and I and I think there's it's rare that we we as people as the busy lives that we have like get an opportunity to just like be with you yourself and like your thoughts and have time to reflect. And I think it's been, I honestly think it's been a little bit of a godsend, like minus all the stuff that's happening, of course. But I think for me on a personal level, I think it's been a little bit of a godsend. And I'm like grateful for the opportunity that it's kind of like given me to just do some self work and some self healing, which is what also like what the song talks about. 
which is great. Mm. Like, it's, it's so nice to hear someone taking so much positivity out of this, obviously, this strange climate that we're mm. in. Um, yeah. So, obviously, you talk about the song Garden in My Mind. Finn, why don't you tell us a bit about uh, why you wrote this song? Yeah, I mean, I love, I love the link you've made there already. Um, yeah, this song is, is um, also from, from the Allotment musical, which we heard the song from right at the start of the, of the concert. Um, it's basically a character called Neil who has, who has a really challenging, a challenging past um, and has spent some time in time prison and, and cut a long story short, basically has, has found kind of solace, I guess, and rehabilitation in rehabilitation in working, working this allotment garden and, and has found that this has been a really positive thing for his mental health um, and a sense of community. And, and this is basically as, as he's faced with losing all of that, this song comes at that moment. Nice, man. Yeah. So literally a perfect link then, obviously, what you're yeah. saying, positive vibes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think even, you know, the physical act of building a garden and all of that, but it, I think as well, like, from what I got from it was also kind of the mental thing of being able to do the little work that we all need in our own minds. Yeah. Like, being able to grow your own shit in your head and kind of face the little demons we have and kind of, it's like, I think the line that kind of six lost inside myself like we all get mm -hmm. lost like and I, and I genuinely feel like the last like couple maybe like five six years I've kind of been a little bit lost and I've kind of been like wandering and I don't know just I did kind of like lose myself in so many different things and I think it's amazing when you can like I know for me it's been mostly because of like therapy and kind of having just having that kind of open and honest dialogue with yourself and being able to just talk to someone who doesn't know you on a personal level and is talking from a kind of professional level to just kind of help you just acknowledge all of those things. And I think it's just amazing to be able to do that. So mm. I, I obviously matched this very well then, Jane, matching you to that song. <laughs> <laughs> it's all planned, it's all planned. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's really nice when, you know, when, when a, a song from a musical kind of taken out of context can resonate with someone in a different way and like, yeah, and that's what's so like, powerful I mean, thinking about the storytelling, like, well, you know, and telling stories is that everyone takes something different from, from all, all the stories that they hear and they make it their own and yeah, absorb it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, the, this isn't the only song that we're going to be hearing, we're also going to be hearing uh, Cheap Van. Uh, why don't you tell us a bit about that one, Finn? And just as a disclaimer for Cheap Van, there is a lot of um, adult language in this song. So uh, <laughs> if, uh, if obviously you do not, or your, you or your families do not want to listen, then obviously please turn off now, um, or just before it yeah. is announced. Uh, but Brie Finn, actually sang this, yeah. Brie sang this song in another concert, online concert recently, and, and they didn't um, give a warning, and my mum was watching. And she like texts me in the middle of the song. She's like, "It's it's a great concert, but that language." Um, yeah. So basically, this um, this song is from a musical called The Bowmaker, which is a collaboration with a Brazilian um, composer and songwriter. I'm working on on this show at the moment, and it basically, I, I won't tell the whole story of it. Um, but it basically moves between Brazil and Scotland and, and tells the story of this of this young woman, Lara, who. Um, has come to Scotland, kind of selling wood from her her dad's farm in in Brazil, and um, and this is at the moment where basically um, everything is going wrong for her. Um, she's she's realised that she's the wood that she's got is worthless, and also her her van is breaking down throughout the the process of the song. She needs a cigarette. Her lighter's not working. Basically, just the world is falling apart. Um, and this is this is cheap van. Yeah. Amazing. Cheers, Finn. Um, so, without further ado, Emmanuel, do you want to do us the honours of uh, introducing the two songs? My name is Emmanuel, and I'll be singing Garden in My Mind. And then afterwards, we've got Brienne Keller, who'll be singing Cheap Fat. Garden in my mind. Filled with memories I am now left behind I was wandering blind Hoping to find Answers I searched all the shelves Broke down all of the doors Lost inside myself Fighting all kinds of wars 
helping all kinds of trolls, never knowing what for. I was thrown a rope, led to a garden. I was past a key and left to grow. And it's there I find that there's a garden in my mind. So I cleared it there, planted carrots and peas, and I built a shed, learned the names of the trees, learned to value the bees, learned I'm just a trustee of this garden I see, and the garden in me. I have worked this land, worked through those dark days. I have fed the soil, and it's fed me, and it's here I find that I can leave my walls behind and grow a garden. In my Good, Laura, very, very good. You'll be a millionaire before you're 22. Buy a chip van, Laura, fill it full of wood. Don't bother checking if the wood is any good. Start the ignition, Laura, slam the pedal down. Show up at a funeral, very smart. Look at you, hat full of dreams, Laura, living in a cloud. Where to now? Shit, shit, motherfucker. And I hear my father's voice. Que eu não paro de escutar. O meu pai sempre a falar. Procure onde quiser aquilo que você quer. Preste atenção no que eu digo. Vai estar sempre contigo. Esteja onde estiver. Something they don't really need. All you gotta do is get people to believe that the thing they really want is the thing you have to sell. It's a lesson I have learned and it's done me pretty well. Look straight ahead, Laura. Look straight ahead. You could sell watches or jewelry instead. You sold three sticks. Go buy some fuel. Just stay cool. Oh, Laura. Fuck, motherfucker, cocksucker. And I hear my father's voice. Que eu não paro de escutar. O meu pai sempre a falar. Procure onde quiser aquilo que você quer. Preste atenção no que eu digo. Vai estar sempre contigo. Esteja onde estiver. His laughter, his wise words drift across the sea. You've got this, you know that nothing comes for free in this life. Drive faster, you find it, you might be driving right behind it. Just keep on the road, this long and winding road. And one day your father's 
Jesus' voice will fade out beneath the noise. You'll find what you're meant to be. You'll find it and you'll be free. Long turn, but you never know what lies around coming corners. Goodbye to the funeral mourners. Just turn the key and go. Shit, shit, dick, fuck, ass licker, ball kicker, motherfucker, cocksucker. So that was Emmanuel Kojo and Brienne Keller. And uh, next up, we want to welcome the brilliant Oliver Onsen. Welcome, Ollie. Welcome. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, right. how, how are you finding this weird and wonderful time that we're in? Um, it's hard, isn't it? It's hard. Um, I'm trying to keep creative and busy and fit and all those things, but um, I didn't expect it to, do, to be this long originally, but yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, because you were in uh, Back to the Future when this yes. happened, weren't you? Yeah, it was really crazy because we like officially opened, we did our press night, I think, on the Saturday night, and then we had Sunday off, and we were meant to come back to rehearsals on the Monday, and I think that was the Monday where everything just shut down. Yeah. I think that's right. Um, so we had this big press night and we're like, we're officially open, yes, all the hard work, it's fine, we can now relax and just enjoy the show and enjoy the rest of the run. I think we had like 10 weeks left or something like that. Um, but yeah, no, we, <laughs> we got, you know, got cut, closed. So tough. Yeah. Oh, yeah. mate. Yeah, we, we, uh, earlier in the chat, me, uh, me and Finn were talking about where he was because he was in Chicago working on a new musical and uh, oh. he had to come back. Oh, my God. Yeah, we were supposed to be going over to New York and having kind of a bunch of meetings about a bunch of different stuff and had to kind of totally cut that, cut that short and, and come back over here. Um, yeah. It's just a yeah. weird, weird, weird time. And like I said, hopefully at some point we'll get back to normal. But in the meantime, we'll have to continually work from our bedrooms, I guess. Yeah. Um, It'll be yeah. A, new, a new normal. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. And Ollie, how have you, how have you found uh, uh, recording this and uh, working on Finn's work? Oh, it's been great. Like, as soon as I heard the song, I was like, this is amazing. Like, it's so good. Oh, so, like, chill. So, just like me. Um, and I loved every moment of it, actually. And Finn's been amazing. He sent me loads of different keys and different sort of <laughs> ways to sing it or whatever. And, yeah, it's been great. Like, yeah, so thank you, Finn. Thank you so much. Cool. Music is amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Pleasure and to Finn, have your voice on it. Finn, why don't you tell us a bit more about the song itself and where it kind of came from? Yeah, so actually we were just talking about the show that I was working on over in, over in Chicago before this all kicked off. And, and Snowstorm... Um, was actually a song that was in that in that show um, and has now been cut from it so one of the really tough things that you have to do when you're working on a new musical you know is is sometimes killing your babies and actually that is a terrible expression and um, is sometimes <laughs> getting rid of the, the parts that you love you know and the parts that um mm. that you know the, the, the songs you love if it doesn't necessarily fit with the right moment in the story or where that character is at at a certain point um, and and it, with this song it basically it was the song that we all loved but it just was the attention was on the wrong character at that point in the story and it just it had to go and um, mm. so it's now a song that i'm not sure what will happen with it next but i'm really delighted that, that ollie's going to be singing it today keeping it alive yeah <laughs> exactly it alive. it's funny it's you say that yeah. it's funny you say that about like um you know letting songs go and how our musicals evolve just going back to the back Back to the Future thing. Mm. Our first like running time of Back to the Future was longer than Lane is, which oh. no musical should ever be longer than Lane is. I think that's the only one. <laughs> I agree. Get away with it. Um, but eventually we like cut thirty minutes off, and it was cutting songs, cutting things that we all enjoyed doing, but we just like we can't have it one because it's too long and it doesn't really add too much yeah. to the story. So we get it. It's tough. I, also, I often think the creative process is just like pulling away all the fat until you're left with like exactly just what's yeah. needed. Yeah. No, exactly. And, and, and also, obviously, uh, we'll be hearing your song. But before that, we'll be hearing uh, a rendition of Flick the Switch, which is from your solo album, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, which is um, it's really fun that Joanne is, is singing this song. Um, this is one of the, the oldest songs on the album. I wrote this song when I was 16 or 17. Um, and um, yeah, it made it onto the album. And it's, it's cool that she's bringing it alive tonight. Well, without further ado, should we... Uh, Crack on and have, have a listen. So, Ollie, do you want to do us the uh, honours of introducing the next two songs? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. The next two songs are by Joanne Clifton, Flip the Switch, and myself, Oliver Ormson, with Snowstorm. Enjoy. Yes. 
was Joanne Clifton and Oliver Ormson and now we have our last and final guest um, joining me and Finn and uh, this is Ella Young. Welcome Ella. Hello. How are things? Hey, Ella. Oh good yeah, a bit boring but same for everyone on that so. <laughs> <laughs> so we came across you on a random way via Twitter. Um, so 
over the last couple of weeks, your uh, your work has con- gone a little bit viral. Um, yeah. And so how's that been? Um, a bit scary, I'm not going to lie. It's been a bit all over the shop, to be honest. But it's been really fun and really exciting. There's a lot of opportunities that have come up from it. So really good, yeah. Amazing. And um, obviously you're in this, you're singing a duet with Matt Henry. Yeah. Um, how have you found working with Matt? Oh, he's lovely. He's so lovely. So easy going. Like I was, I, I was really intimidated to be honest to do any Zoom calls with him at all because I was like, uh, that's really scary. But he's actually really nice. So. <laughs> Great. Well, yeah. Like I said, he's he's been such a, a nice guy, and he's been so supportive of obviously working um, with. Well, not even a graduate. You're you're still training, aren't you? Yeah. Absolutely. Crazy, crazy <laughs> first year. Um, so Finn. Um, Obviously, Ella and Matt are singing 300 Feet, which we spoke about, obviously, earlier, which is yeah, right. just a huge right. Ella. Yeah, this is, this is my favourite song of Finn's. Um, I, I love all of Finn's work, but this is the song that kind of I got introduced to, to and to Finn. Um, so, Finn, why don't you tell us a bit more about the song? Yeah, for sure. So, this is, um, this is kind of taking it way back to, the, to yeah, 20, 2013 um, in a show called Streets. Um, and this song is basically... Um, it's basically kind of a love, a love duet between between the two lead characters. Um, they have been kind of having this secret relationship where they meet up on on the rooftop every every night, and um, one one of them is trying to kind of move that forward, and one of them is is more hesitant. And it's basically kind of a song, a song between the two of them, a pop song. <laughs> so, and, and I said it's a it's a perfect song to kind of uh, have as our final two as well, and. Um, uh, Ella, so back to you. Uh, have you, um, with obviously all this, have, have you, uh, what's been the most kind of exciting thing that's come out of this whole kind of new, not what well, kind of found fame, I guess, with uh, this viral video? Um, I mean, this is really exciting, to be honest, because everything else is a little bit daunting. To, like, this is something that I was, have been able to look forward to because mm. I've had a few, like, interests from agents and stuff but that's just been really scary like exciting but too scary for me to say that it's the best part <laughs> so probably this actually because i've been able to look forward to it and um yeah no oh, exactly well great perfect and yeah it's kind of unprecedented for a, a first year student to be offered representation i don't, yeah. I don't know about you Finn, but I, I don't hear of many people that happen into yeah it's it's been a bit it was like really exciting like obviously I, I it's great i'm really happy that it's happening it's just I, i've gone from being about six months into my training and not really having any exposure and then it's just gone boom really and it's just a bit odd <laughs> well thank you for joining us and like i said thank you for agreeing to do this and be part of obviously finn's music and celebrate his work have you, have you managed to listen to any of his other tracks? I think a few people have been stalking his work. I know I have. Yeah, I've been really. on a little YouTube playlist um, ex- explore this past couple of days. And it's, lovely. I love it. it's amazing. I love it. Thanks, Helen. You're welcome. My, my thing is, is I, Finn, obviously, <clears throat> if people don't know, you, you sing a lot of your own work as well. You, you record a lot of your own tracks and obviously you record, you don't just compose, you are a singer. Um, and uh, the one thing I am slightly gutted that we, we didn't put together is obviously get you to sing a song yourself. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, it's kind of, you know, because I have my stuff as a singer songwriter and then, you know, musical theatre stuff is always very different and um, writing songs for, for different characters is very different and I don't tend to feel like I'm the right person to sing the songs, you know, for those, for those other characters. Um, so yeah, it's just really nice to sit back and, and hear other people, other, hear other real, like real singers um, sing my stuff. <laughs> oh come on, your Jan, your your versions are amazing as well. But like I said, at, at least you can just sit back and relax a little bit and just uh, uh, listen to people take on uh, new varied uh, ideas of your work as well. Yeah, when you said um, when you said it's like celebrating the work of Fernandes, it sounds like I've been dead for like 150 <laughs> years. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's great. I'm just watching from the grave. It's wonderful. Yeah. Exactly that, Jane. That, that, that's the idea. Is you don't actually know we're actually going to kill you after this, and then it's just so you won't actually be able to see it. Um, <laughs> 300 feet underground. Yeah. So, obviously, the second song we're all going to be listening to is uh, 
Daniel Hope and uh, a bit of Change of Plan. So why don't you tell us a bit about that something? Yeah, so um, Change of Plan is from another song, which is the show I was working on um, in Chicago when this when this all kicked off. Um, and basically this, the, the character that Danielle is playing is called Sarah. She's our, our protagonist and she is basically going on, to cut a very long story short, going on a journey of of discovering her own desires to become a mother um, and, and rediscovering stories from her past and her family tree of other women in, in her, in her um, yeah, generations before her. Um, and this song is coming at a moment where she is kind of like really embracing that, that idea of motherhood um, for, for the first time. Right. Well, I, I was actually lucky enough to see that show um, uh, up in, ah, yeah. in Edinburgh. And it was, uh, it was great. It was uh, Tanya who directed, right? Yeah, Tanya Azevedo yeah. is, is wonderful, who I've mentioned yeah. already. Yeah, oh, I think we'll mention Tanya Azevedo about 32 times in this concert. <laughs> so, uh, seeing as uh, you guys uh, seem to work so close together and so brilliantly together. Well, uh, without further ado, let, let's listen to the final two songs, I guess. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's obviously tuned in, all the performers, all the artists, all our guests, uh, everyone who has supported the barn. Um, through the last kind of crazy times and also supported theatre and our industry as this is a time where we have to link together and uh, support each other and Finn obviously thank you for allowing us to celebrate your work even though you are still alive um, and <laughs> no, uh, thank you it's a, it's a real pleasure yeah absolute our pleasure buddy and um, Ella do you want to introduce the final two songs yeah sure so we're gonna have me and Matt Henry uh, singing 300 feet and then Danielle Hope singing change of plan Cheek is warm to the touch, too much of me needs you. You speak again, there's that rush, but who are you rushing to? I hear your words, but I don't know if it's you or the drink that's talking. You kept stalling, it was dangerous, but I'm falling for you. But now there's nothing but us You try to run but you don't know What you're running from Can't spend the rest of our lives Sailing on the rooftop looking at the silly lights From beautiful heights Waiting for the moment I can look into your eyes And not have to hide 300 feet above ground To know you're with me, want to, to shout, shout your name. name from the highest rooftop. Then I turn around and, and I look back. Need to know you're with me here Our in maps ever change. 
changing How was I ever to know all this would show just by holding myself up to the light Space to breathe, space to think, space to be and see for me this just feels Won't 
In March 2018, we opened our doors to the public with a vision not just to create challenging professional theatre, but to use this as a platform to inspire and bring communities together. Theatre and culture build identity. With theatre and culture in our local life, the community landscape is more vibrant. Local life is enriched. We believe that the benefits of theatre should be available for everyone. Our Theatre for All programme has removed financial barriers, giving disadvantaged people access to the theatre free of charge. So we were told that we'd come here and have a Christmas meal and then go and watch A Christmas Carol. Our aim is to make live professional theatre available to everyone and use that experience for positive change. Theatre can be transformational in young lives. Our academy is now in its fourth year and we continue to build on our vision of bringing the best performing arts tuition to the heart of the Cotswolds. We work hard to make our academy as inclusive and as accessible as possible. Discounts apply for parents with more than one child. Our bursaries help support talented children from less affluent backgrounds. The Academy creates a fun and challenging environment where children can build friendships and develop key skills not just for theatre, but for life. We are also able to provide real opportunities for students who wish to pursue careers in the arts. My name is Harry Apps. I am currently playing Marius in Les Miserables in the West End. Barn outreach and learning programmes engage with thousands of people. Our free workshops support the drama curriculum in local schools. Singing and musical theatre workshops in community groups and care homes have helped address issues of isolation. Our Song for Sirencester project in aid of mental health charities brought our community together in an unprecedented way. We've collaborated with many charities in the region, including the Churn Project, to support individuals dealing with the barriers to finding work. Since working at UAN, my life's changed. It's given me some purpose, given me an interest, some confidence I was lacking prior to all this. The Barn Theatre played a pivotal role in the town's 2018 World War I centenary celebrations. Who could forget our record-breaking human poppy? Our live streaming work on the annual Advent Festival helped thousands engage and take part in Sirencester's Christmas festivities. In these times of uncertainty, we strive to keep the community together. The theatre may be temporarily closed, but our commitment to you goes on. Even now, our amazing costume department are helping the NHS by making scrubs for frontline workers. We've used our technology to build a free live streaming service that provides much needed community news and entertainment for all the family. Broadcasting every day to keep us all connected. We are not just a theatre. We are the bar.